Face Augmentation Implant Experience. I am currently two weeks post-op. So if you want to know all the tea, everything that's been going down since I got these titties done, then stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And also feel free to leave any other questions or comments you have in the description. I mean, sorry, in the notes section because in my next video, I will answer some of the questions that I might not have answered in this video. Um, also, like I said in the last video, um, save the hate for your mom, okay? Because the bad comments get filtered out before they even get posted. So don't waste your own finger time, girl, okay? Don't waste your headspace and your finger cramp just to write a negative comment that no one will see. So, without further ado, let's get right into, you know, why you guys came here. No, I'm just kidding. So I am just kind of gonna start at the beginning of the experience. If you haven't seen my last video, all about why I'm getting, why I got my boobs done and why I chose to get my boobs done and why I chose to go where I went, then you need to watch my last video and I'm gonna link it right here so that you can just click that and come back to this video once you watch that video because it probably answered some of the questions that you're gonna have. So, um, I went in, okay, let me start by saying the place that I went to was Black Hawk Plastic Surgery. That is in San Ramon, California, Danville, Black Hawk, whatever. If you Google it, it says it's in Black Hawk. But if you are from the Bay Area, it's like by San Ramon, Danville, whatever. Um, so I did not go out of state to get my surgery. And my doctor's name was Dr. Ronan. Um, and he is board certified. Yes, he is board certified. He's the one that did my surgery. So, um, I initially went to him, like I said, two years ago. I did some research and research and research. And then in August, I decided to go for a consultation, a serious consultation. Um, and I was able to book my surgery. So, I got my surgery on August 27th. And I had my consultation literally two weeks before that. I don't know the exact date, but just look at the calendar and go two weeks back from the august 27th and that is the day that i had my consultation so it was a very quick like time frame so i went in for my consultation and the doctor was like this is what we're gonna do he just looked at my boobs um and he was like yeah you need a lift you need an implant and he was like 400 cc for what what you want and i was like 400 cc now doctor that sounds like a lot on this itty bitty frame um but I, I don't want to like go too much into it because if I'm not a plastic surgeon or whatever, ask your surgeon or Google it or do some research of your own. But basically from what I understand, um, every implant is different. So 400 cc's on you might be something different on me. For me, prior to having the surgery, I barely had any breasts. So before I was pregnant, I had an A cup. And then when I got pregnant, I went to a C cup. But when I lost all the weight, it deflated like to nothing. Like when I say nothing, I mean nothing. I had nothing. So in order for me to have the volume that I was really going for, I needed to kind of get a bigger implant because I didn't have any breast tissue for my doctor to work with to begin with. So he was like, yeah, you kind of need a bigger implant to get the fullness and get the look that you're going for because girl, you have no breast tissue and you're so stretched out. So. I'm back with my bookman. So when I went to my post op, um, they gave me this huge packet, okay? Um, and this huge packet basically talks about everything that I need to know in regards to my surgery. So it tells me my surgery date, which was August 27th, 2020. I literally wrote yikes next to the date because i was so freaked out and i just wrote little notes like where my medication was being called to because they did give me my medication i will tell you guys what medication they gave me um i also wrote down like don't eat past 10 o'clock because my surgery was at 5 30 a.m and i was not allowed to eat um 10 hours before my surgery what else did this packet go over so Here's a table of contents, and I'm just going to read it to you so that you guys can... I don't have to flip through every page. It's a thick-ass packet. Um, so basically, it just says preparing for surgery, medications to avoid, going to the surgery center, general surgical risk, specific surgical risk, 
applicable health factors, anesthesia and other information, consent for surgery, smoking consent, medications, post-operative care slash outpatient surgery, specific post-operative instructions, as you heal instructions, specific as you heal instructions, patient's bill of rights, financial policies, financial policies regarding revision and complications, emotional and physical reactions. So this packet literally talks about, oh, and a congratulations and a welcome letter from the doctor, um, which I thought was sweet. Um, so basically it just says don't drink alcohol 15 days prior, no aspirin. It just goes over everything that I need. It has some numbers in here for the um, 24 hour um, nurse that they have at that um, facility. It just basically has everything. Surgical risks, what I should know, everything, everything, everything that you need to know in this packet, okay? Um, so the next thing is this little booklet and this is all about the type of implants that I got. So the type of implants that I got are the Mentor Memory Gel Silicone Gel Breast Implants. I got 400 cc high profile. And the reason why I got this, because I asked my doctor why do I need high profile, is because I am small. So I'm only 5'2 and I'm only 115 pounds. So I'm a pretty small girl. And um, the way he explained it to me was basically, if I don't get high profile, that they would sit lower and wider, which is not a good look for my, my frame. So the um, high profiles, they sit like higher and they sit closer, which is good because my shoulders are smaller. So I did end up getting a few things that were recommended. I said I did watch a lot of videos and a lot of girls did recommend items to make you more comfortable during recovery. So uh, the list of things that I got was a husband pillow, a neck pillow. I also got CBD cream. Well, I make my own CBD cream, but you can get CBD cream. Um, and not to put on the incisions, but to just put on the muscles, which really helped. CBD cream along with a heating pad really, really helped. Um, I had a bunch of extra pillows. I got a humidifier. Um, and the humidifier was more so because I was really concerned about breathing all of the smoke. Another thing that I did in that brief time span was get my prescription medications. Now I do want to, another thing that I want to tell you guys is that if you don't have insurance, um, these medications are very expensive. I was make I made sure to ask the pharmacy and the medications were a big chunk of change. I don't know if all like if it's all if all medication costs the same everywhere, so I'm not even gonna scare you with the exact number, but um I would consider the fact that you you need medications and you if you don't have insurance, they are expensive. So add that on to the list of things that you're planning to pay for with the surgery. I'm lucky. Um, I'm grateful that my insurance covered my, um, what am I trying to say? I'm grateful that my insurance covered my medication because girl, they're expensive as fuck, to be honest. But I'm going to let you know the medications that I got. And um, so, clindamycin, I got acetaminophen, ibuprofen, gabapentin, Zolfran, Ultram, and Singular. So, Clindamycin is an antibiotic. Acetaminophen is, we all know, that's just a, a pain, over-the-counter pain medication. Um, ibuprofen, again, we all know what that is. Gabapentin is a pain and nerve medication. Zofran is a nausea medication. Ultram is, it says breakthrough pain. Um, and that is another name for tramadol. That is a narcotic. It is um, very addictive. So be careful with the medications. I'm only saying that because I did read a lot of stories. People were like, oh, I had a hard time leaning myself off the medication. And it's like, they're strong AF. So just be mindful of how much medication you're taking because I feel like when I was taking the medic, when I was taking the tramadol, it did take away the pain, but it kept me in bed and then it kept me sluggish. So like, I was, I'm not sure if I was like sluggish because of the surgery or sluggish because of the tramadol, if that makes sense. So um, there's that. And then Singular is for a capsular contracture, preventative medication, just I guess to 
help lessen the risk of capsular contracture. If you don't know what capsular contracture is, it's like when the tissues and the muscle or I guess around the implant harden and like, or st stiffen and I don't know, Google it, okay, ask your mom. Anyways, so I got my medications and then I made arrangements for Holly to be with my mom for the first four days of my surgery. Um, I cleaned up my house because I knew I wasn't going to be able to clean. I did some grocery shopping just to get some easy things, some, um, um, some water, some Mio. If you don't know what Mio is, it's like the little squeezy thing, the squeezy flavors that you put in your water. I really recommend that because they want you to drink a lot of water and sometimes you just get tired of drinking water and the Mio just gives you a little bit of flavor. So yeah, that's that. Now let's talk about surgery day and night before surgery. I said Jesus 530 a.m. and my mom lives closer to the doctor than I do so um, I just didn't want to be driving from my house at like 3 a.m. to get there so we stayed at my mom's house and I was a wreck I was fucking crying I was like I need to call them and get my money back I need to postpone this I need to push this back I need to cancel reschedule something because I had the most irrational fear of just everything bad like in, in the kind of person that i am like i was watching so many videos on youtube of doctors actually performing the surgery performing the just cutting and moving and nipping and tucking and i kind of like scared myself but i'm the kind of person where like i have to see them do it not that i can like instruct them or even help them during the fucking surgery but like I just want to see what they're going to do to me. So all those videos, and not only that, I was very scared of like, not like the, the anesthesia cocktail not being right and me like feeling pain and not being able to move or me not being able to move. I mean, me not feeling pain, but being able to move. Like, I don't know, like I was just afraid of like being awake and aware doing surgery and not being able to alert the fucking doctor and he's just cutting up in my titty and I'm just sitting there and then like I go on a cardiac arrest because I feel the pain. Like, I don't know, it was so dumb, but like in my head, it was like a very serious thing. And then I was like, well, damn, am I selfish? Like, I have a kid. What if I die and my kid doesn't have a mom all because I wanted perky titties? Like, that is selfish, you know? So anyways, I had all these fucking crazy ass thoughts. And Barr was like, listen, you can do this. You've been wanting this. You're fine. I'll be there. I'll be right outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, you chose a good doctor. You did the research. I trust you. You trust you. You trust your doctor. All this doctor feel shit. And so it made me feel better. Um... But I was, I wasn't expecting to be so afraid. I wasn't expecting to have so many nerves the night before surgery. I never had any other like, well, I had a C-section, but I, I, like I said before, I never had any other surgery. So I was just really scared. And then I couldn't smoke, you feel me? I couldn't just like roll up. So I was just like real on edge, real like, oh my God, like am I really about to do this? And they already got my coin, okay? and. You know so anyways that was that um hi guys i'm trying to vlog i look crazy my eyes are puffy because i was crying yesterday because i'm scared shitless about the surgery but it is like five in the morning 4 50 in the morning and we're actually getting gas because we are about to be on our way to the surgery center the surgery center is not far from my house it's only like well, my mom's house. My mom's house. It's only like 35 minutes from my mom's house with no traffic. So that's where we go, yo. And so my surgery was scheduled for 5.30 a.m. I got there at 5.30 a.m. on the dot and I walked into the facility. I was the only girl there. Now, this facility, and this is part of the reason why I chose this facility and why I love this facility. And the reason why is because... They have the capabilities of doing everything. So I didn't need to see a doctor at one office, have my surgery at another office, do recovery at another office or anything. Like Blackhawk is capable of like post-op, pre-op, surgery, and like the recovery part of the situation. So um, anyways, I went there at 5.30 
Um, when I got there, the nurse made me take a pregnancy test. I did a COVID test prior uh, to this. So I did a COVID test at my pre-op appointment and then I did a COVID test the day of my surgery. Um, and it was just like a blood test. It wasn't like a brain fucking swab, you know? Um, so I did that. I did a pregnancy test. She took some vitals and then she gave me um, a medication for nausea. Because when I first walked in, the first thing I said was, is it common for people to feel like they're about to throw up? And the nurses were like, yeah, girl, like it's your nerves, you're gonna be fine. Um, so they took me to the back and there's like, it looks like the ER. Like, you know how like when you go to the back of the ER, they have like the hospital beds and like the, the um, curtains, but no one was there. It was clean, it was empty. They had some nice music playing. I was the only girl there. Um, she gave me a gown. I undressed from the waist up, so I did keep my pants on. I just had some sweats. Um, and then she just gave me some medications and we just talked. We talked about her kids and we talked about my kid. We talked about the fires in California. We talked about COVID. And then the anesthesiologist came in and he introduced himself and he said that he was going to give me a champagne and it wasn't, obviously it wasn't a real champagne, but he said it was referred to as champagne um, and that I probably wouldn't really remember much from this point forward. So he gave me the champagne and then he said Dr. Ron is going to be in in a second to mark you up. And I think maybe like two minutes later, Dr. Ronan came in, he did some markings and then they walked me over to the surgery room and, oh no, 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 they put me back on the bed and then they wheeled that bed into the surgery room. And then all I remember is the anesthesiologist and the nurse saying, scoot your butt over. And I remember scooting my butt over to like the surgery table. And then I remember the anesthesiologist being like, scoot your head up, because he wanted my head to be in this orange, round, like, positioner thing. And girl, that was it. I was out. I was done. I was finished. I was through. I was out. I was out of here. It was so quick. It didn't even feel like a dream. Like, you know when you wake up, you can tell that you were asleep? It didn't even feel like that. It just was like time that was unaccounted for it was just like time in the universe that i wasn't here that i was just absent and then i just woke up back in the same like little recovery bed and i just remember the nurse saying we're gonna go get your fiance we're gonna get your fiance and there was bar standing over me and I don't know what, I think this machine is a heater. Hey. Hey. You got titties? Yeah, I got titties. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. And I was, I just, I had titties and it was so quick. Like every fear that I had, I feel so silly for having because it went off without a hitch and I really psyched myself out by going through the motions before because honestly my surgery and the experience that I had was nothing like what I thought I was going to have you know I was still like I was high off the anesthesia and like the medication but I wasn't like wisdom tooth high like you know what I'm saying like where I'm like out of it saying crazy shit like I was able to like I was able like I was up like I was able to like give bar like directions on the phone you know like I was able to like I was cognizant I wasn't like out of it out of it to where I was like loopy and saying like crazy shit um and then I just came home and I just like posted up in the bed. I just posted up in the bed and just chilled. Hi guys. I am out of surgery. I am a couple hours out of surgery, like two hours out of surgery. I just got home. It was like an hour drive. I, I'm. This is what I'm working with. I have my um, 
jacket unbuttoned but in all honesty i was really terrified like hold on let me zip this up i was really really terrified um as i told you guys in my previous video and i'm just so grateful and thankful that everything was okay everybody there i have to give a really big shout out to the nurse sandy and the nurse jennifer the anesthesiologist dr k dr ronan i was so worked up i was crying on the way there and when i got there they just made me feel so welcome and so like sure um nurse sandy was just talking to me and like we were just chopping it up like we were friends and nurse jennifer was doing the same dr k was very sweet his energy was very calm which made me very calm um they gave me some medication um before they put me in the operation room and dr k called it like a champagne not obviously not champagne but he called it like champagne and said that it would kind of make me like tired um i remember being wheeled into the operating room moving on to the operating bed and then i remember dr k saying okay we're gonna put this on your finger and literally the next thing I remember is a nurse saying, okay, hon, we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring your fiance and we're gonna bring Bar in. And I was just like, what? Like, I mean, obviously I wasn't like, what? Because I was loopy, but like, that was it, honey. I don't remember a damn thing. Like that was lights out. So I'm feeling okay considering I'm not like, in any real pain and honestly i'm not out of breath i can breathe just fine so um shout out to dr ronan i'm just very excited i'm just i'm just ec ecstatic about this new chapter in my life and dr ronan i owe you like my life if i could give you new tits i would um because you don't even know what you just did for me so i'll keep you guys updated i'm really I don't want to say tired, but like tired. So, peace out, guys. Now, I will say this. The pain was literally non-existent. I can say honestly, truthfully, that, and I'm a wimp when it comes to like, Pain. like I feel like my c-section was so painful it was so painful y'all like that was a hard one to get over but the pain with these boobs I really felt like it was probably a three out of ten the whole time the whole time um I did take the tramadol at night to sleep because it was really hard getting to sleep and staying asleep and sometimes I would wake up kind of like not in pain but just really uncomfortable because of how I had to sleep and I think that is what a lot of the miss, the like, the pain came from. Was this like the shoulders and my back and my neck from having to sleep upright, not being able to lay on my side, not being able to really get comfortable. So the majority of the pain was not the boobs, not the scars, not the, not this itself, but the shoulders and the neck and the back. It was just sleeping up right is just not it if, if, if you sleep up right then you won't have an issue but for me it just was miserable I just could I just and I'm still sleeping upright less of an angle than I was but I'm still not sleeping on my stomach or fully on my side and it is rough so I will say that that is the part that I've been having the most trouble with um but that's it, y'all. Honestly, if I could have got these boobs done when I first wanted them done, I would have just did it. Like, if I knew what I know now, I would have just done it because it's so worth it. I feel so much more confident. I know everybody is here for the boobs, so I'm just going to show what you guys came here for. Can you guys see? I don't want to get demonetized. I'm still like a little linebacker-ish. I'm still a little buff. You feel me? I'm definitely still a little hard. I'm not jiggly at all. You know what I'm saying? So for everyone like, girl, why haven't you been posted on the gram? Why you ain't been taking no bikini pics? Like, listen, this really is a healing process. So I'm not in a rush to like have the girls out. I literally only have this shirt on for 
for the video because I've just been in tank tops and like graphic tees. Um, I haven't been wearing any bra. My doctor instructed me to wear no bra for the first six months. Don't ask me why. Don't argue with me in the comments, okay? My doctor is my doctor and I'm gonna follow his instruction because listen, I pay a lot of money to not wear a bra actually. So I'm very glad that that is his take on the world, you know? Um, but anyways, yeah, it is a healing process. So like I said, I'm two weeks post-op right now and this is my arm mobility. So I do have implants implanted through the armpit and then a lollipop incision lift and the reason why it's two separate incisions and two separate things is the way my doctor explained it because if the lift is compromised then the implant is compromised and vice versa i guess so like i don't know google it ask a doctor but that's what he said so basically that they both won't be compromised if one goes wrong so my implants are put in through the armpit and my lift is obviously a lollipop down i do not have an anchor scar so it's just this and this and my scars are little like very thin and i don't keloid i don't scar dark um another thing um how you if you have any other scars how those heal is a good indicator of how um anything else will heal so if you typically keloid then consider that you might keloid um here if you decide to get you know this surgery um but yeah my scars are very very tiny so i'm really not worried about that also it's like who really sees the nipple besides you know y'all know anyways no one's gonna see it so i really don't care it's not like i plan on just walking around safely like this you know what i'm saying so i i don't have any big incisions um as far as mobility my arms are still quite sore and i can lift them but not that much and not because it is like pain but it's just tight it's just sore it feels like i did hella push-ups lifted hella weights like i i still have trouble like i'm having trouble holding a cereal bowl i was having trouble like pushing the car door closed opening the front door because i'm just like really weak um that's it guys i'm very happy with my results and it's only been two weeks um yeah okay so i just also wanted to say that so um so when i left from getting my surgery they the nurse went over all of this stuff with bars so this is another instruction packet um and she told bar all this information i guess while i was asleep so that he could know and this is just basically talking about um the breast strap that they gave me so they did release me with a breast strap that was just like a velcro thing that went up top the breast to like push them down so that the implant would kind of settle down as opposed to like being pushed up and supported by a bra so the strap was there and i wore the strap for the first seven days um I don't have to wear the strap anymore and another thing they just went over was like all the medication and what the medications were for how to take the medication and then they also had a just like an emotions chart just to you know give me a heads up that it's normal to feel like god oh, damn what did i do to myself after you get surgery but to keep in mind that it's a healing process and it is ugly before it is better and i really did go through that i had a couple breakdowns because i just couldn't do shit for myself and bar was doing everything and i was just kind of just i felt helpless i felt sad i was tired of laying on my back i was tired of not being able to sleep comfortably tired of taking all this nasty ass medication tired of being nauseous um so i it was rough it was rough mentally you know what i'm saying because you see yourself in a way that you've never seen yourself and you're just like whoa is this the right decision and then you have to go through all of these thoughts and then you have to have someone tell you like listen i know it looks a little frankensteinish right now but that's just the healing process and sure enough i can say that 
I am ecstatic. I'm just, I'm just so happy. Dr. Roman, if you watch my videos, I love you. I owe you something. I don't know what, but I just owe you like a life. I owe you another life time because I just have so much confidence back and I'm not even healed. I'm not even to my full extent and I just feel so much more confident, so much more womanly. Like, I don't know, judge your mother, but you know, there's something about some nice tits that just do something to the to the body, to the body image. And I'm just happy that I did that for myself. So very understanding and very empathetic and very just down to earth you know what i'm saying like he was real about the results he was real about the expectations he was real about the healing he was real about the process he was real about everything and there was no fucking jumps and hoops and acrobatics and just all this other shit you know what i'm saying i like the staff the staff was very kind i could tell that the nurse could tell that I was uncomfortable I could tell that she could tell that I was chicken shit and her energy the energy that she gave me was good enough to really calm me the fuck down because you guys don't understand when I said that I was scared shitless I was really ready to let them just have my coin and be like I'm just going to stuff my bra or something for the rest of my life because I cannot get a surgery um so the fact that it's just all these little things that just played into my liking of this facility. Um, and I had my post-op seven days from my surgery date, which was, I think, September 2nd or September 3rd. And when I went in, they just took off the chest plate, um, not the chest plate, but the, the chest strap, the compression band, um, looked at my incisions. The nurse taught me how to massage my breast up here and down here um and what else nothing they scheduled me for another appointment which is another month out um and he told me i was healing good call if i had any questions or concerns so i don't know guys i am in love with my new tits like I'm just on cloud nine. I'm just on a cloud nine. I just can't believe I did it. Every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, bitch, you did it. Like, you really did it. Like, this is something you were fucking depressed about for two years, almost three years. And you did it. So every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh my God, I got titties. Like, I, I still am in that phase. So I'm very excited. Um, and with that being said, that is my two week update um let me know if you guys have any more questions or comments i'll answer them in about another two weeks i'll come on and let you guys know what's going on with me because things really aren't changing that quick um even though in two weeks they did really soften up i mean i know you guys are probably like software stiff like they're stiff still and they're hard still but like they were hard and stiff when I first got them, I can't emphasize that enough. So, um, yeah. Oh, this shirt is from Shein. I'm going to be doing a haul, a Shein haul for you guys. A new titty haul because I bought all this stuff. I've been buying stuff for months and months before my surgery, before I even knew I was going to get surgery because I was just like, girl, one day you're going to get in, one day you're going to be able to wear all the stuff you wanted to wear. And I'm just like, I can't believe that I can finally wear all this shit that's been in my closet for like a year. So that content is coming soon. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to talk about that nobody talks about in their videos, nerve pain, okay? The shit hurts, the shit hurts. This is not a fault of the doctor, not a fault of my own, not a fault of no one but the human fucking body. When the nerves are reconnecting, the shit hurts, it's like, little lightning bolts in your nipples shooting through your tits coming out of your nipples austin powers style and it's it's painful and i wanted to just give you guys that because no one gave that to me and when it happened i was like ah oh my god what the fuck was that <laughs> and i ran to my handy dandy booklet and sure enough it was like nerve pain 
you might experience that in the nipples and the breasts and sure enough uh it is painful not painful to where like i want to cry but it just when i feel it i'm like oh it's like one of those oh don't touch me right now hold on let me just get through this type pain uh, but other than that, I'm enjoying them. Bar's enjoying them. So shout out to Black Hawk Surgery. Shout out to Dr. Fucking Ronan. You did this. You did this. One thing you did. Yes. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.